Manufacturing is a vast world of machinery, precision, and ingenuity. Within that world lies one of the most transformative tools ever conceived, the stamping die. If you take a look around, chances are almost everything you see has been touched by a stamping die. Many of the components on your smartphone, the appliances in your house, the grill on your patio, all owe their existence to this process. Even entire body panels for cars are made using the stamping die. But before the advent of stamping dies, manufacturing was painstakingly slow. Products were crafted by hand or forged individually, each part requiring time, skill, and labor. By the mid-19th century, progressive stamping dies started to take shape. These dies were capable of cutting and forming sheet metal in a single process which revolutionized production lines. Suddenly, parts that took hours to forge by hand could be done in seconds. As industries evolved, so did the dies. Today, we use CAD CAM softwares and modern CNC machines to make these tools, which has elevated die making to new heights. Stamping dies that once took months are now only taking weeks or even days. With the right die design and the right press, these tools can work at up to 1,500 strokes per minute, with each hit producing a new part. Now stamping dies consist of a lot of different components. Today we're going to be making the punches. And as the name suggests, the punches are the pieces that press or punch into the material. They then pierce through the material into the die and that creates the feature that we need to make. Now normally these pieces are made out of hardened tool steel or even in some cases carbide. Today we're going to be using D2 to make our punches because of its high hardness and wear resistance. And that wear resistance is going to be crucial because it's going to extend the life of our punch and it's going to keep us from having to pull the die out of the press over and over to sharpen our punches. So we're going to get set up and then we're going to run our first stop and get to machining. To make these parts, we're using 10,000 diameter Z plus wire from Sodic. Now this is a zinc coated brass wire and it's gonna allow us to increase our cutting speed and it's gonna improve the surface finish of our parts. So let's get it in the machine. Before we machine the second op of these parts, let's jump into SolidCam and take a look at the programming strategy. So now I've got my parts pulled up in SolidWorks and you can easily jump over into SolidCam and create a new wire EDM part. Now that we've got our part pulled up in SolidCam, let's get it set up. First thing we need to do is set our coordinate system. So we're gonna go ahead and select this top face and it automatically puts our coordinate system down on this front left corner. But we wanna work off of this corner right here so I'm gonna select pick origin, and then we're gonna select this corner, and it moves our coordinate system to where we want it. And we're gonna hit okay. Next, we're gonna select our stock. So for this, since we've actually already machined the first op, I actually have a solid model of what our part looks like after the first op, and we're gonna use that to create our stock so that it's perfectly representative of what we're gonna see in the machine. And for our target, we're just gonna use our part model for our second op. We're gonna hit okay. Now that all that is set up, 
can hit OK and we can start writing our tool paths. So to do that, we're gonna come into operations and we're gonna go add wire EDM operation and we're gonna select profile. From there, we're gonna select new geometry and to select our geometry, we're actually gonna work off of this sketch that I projected to this top surface. And the reason for that is we've got all these openings in the faces of our part and SolidCam's not gonna like working with that. So we're gonna use our sketch. All we gotta do is come over here, select our first entity and then select our last entity. And as you can see, it goes all the way around our chain and that's all we need to select our profile. We're gonna hit okay. Now, next what I like to do is select our thread point. SolidCam is gonna automatically generate a thread point, but I like to use the thread point exactly where I want it. So I go ahead and hit manual, and then I'm gonna select this point that I've created in my sketch. I'm gonna hit okay. Now from there, we can go to EDM data, and we're gonna select a four pass program. From there, we're gonna switch over to technology, and we're gonna make sure that our offsets are all numbered correctly. For my program, it's gonna be one through four on the offset numbers. And then we're gonna turn on compensation for all of our passes. And we also are going to do a zigzag toolpath because on the wire EDM, you can cut zigzag with no issues. So we're gonna take advantage of that. And that's really all we need to do. From there, we're just gonna save and calculate. And as you can see, our toolpath is generated. And from here, we can go ahead and simulate our part. So we're gonna hit simulate, and then it's gonna pull up our simulation. And as you can see, we've got our stock in here that's representative of what our parts looked like after the first op. So this is exactly what we're gonna see inside of the machine. A couple things to note right off the bat before we simulate this, is this is gonna have varying thickness. So through this section right here, when it first enters into the cut, it's gonna be a very thin burn. Then it's gonna get into this area, which is quite a bit thicker, roughly two and a quarter inches. And then it gets into these fork features, which get very thin. So that can cause some issues when it comes to technology. It's difficult to select technology when your thickness is bouncing all over the place. But lucky for us, our SODIC actually has step cut technology. So we're gonna take advantage of that. Another thing to watch for is we're gonna have a lot of slugs on this part. So as it cuts through here, it's actually gonna cut off slugs right here. And since there's separate parts, there's gonna be three separate slugs each time. So we'll cut off a slug here, and then we'll cut a slug right here in the middle, and then we're gonna drop a slug on the other side as well. So we need to watch out for that, and we need to make sure that it's not causing any problems. We need to be there to pull those slugs out so we don't have any issues. All right, let's start our simulation and see how we did. All right, everything looks good. You could see those slugs dropping on the rough cut. Now we're in the trim passes. And that looks great. I mean, everything looks really good with that. It's exactly what we wanted. So now that our part's programmed and we've simulated it and verified that it's good, let's get back out to the machine and run these parts. <laughs> So as you can see, stamping dies are a crucial part of manufacturing and society as we know it. 
from the doors on your car to the components that make up your laptop, these tools are an important part of a lot of the items that you rely on in your day-to-day -day life. I'm super happy with how these punches turned out. Our Sodic AL600P did a phenomenal job. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. We'll catch you guys next time. Thank you